Hi, Dr. Keith Forworth coming from Louisville, Kentucky. We were talking about parathyroids in my last video and we kind of went through everything that's on this board and at the end I dropped in this mention of vitamin D. So I want to pick up where I left off and look at how we add vitamin D to this picture. But you may need to go back and look at that first video where I explain this all in detail. Now, just a quick summary. We talked about in the last video that parathyroids there's four of them in the neck and that they will secrete parathyroid hormone. That hormone controls your calcium and what's supposed to happen is that as the calcium drops the parathyroid increases and when the parathyroid hormone is sufficient to allow for normal calcium then the PTH level will become normal and if the calcium were to get high, then the PTH level should be low. But when we have a parathyroid tumor, that balance gets upset. And so what we'll see is a high calcium level because the parathyroid hormone is being over secreted. This process leads to a lot of bad things, including osteoporosis and kidney stones and atrial fibrillation of the heart. But how does vitamin D play into this? Well, first of all, we need to think about what are the primary functions of vitamin D? And in this particular case, we're really going to focus in on vitamin D's interaction with calcium regulation. And so what we see is that vitamin D is like a turbo booster. It makes PTH more effective. And without getting too complicated, think of it as boosting the functions of parathyroid hormones. So if you've got a lot of vitamin D on board, you don't even need as much PTH because vitamin D will stimulate the absorption of calcium from the gut. So extra vitamin D will allow for that process of, of getting the vitamin D out of our food and getting the calcium out of our food and absorbing that better so that we can have higher levels of calcium in the bloodstream. Vitamin D will also increase calcium release from the bones. Now we have this constant turnover where calcium is deposited into our bones and released from our bones. Our bones are not static. But we have these big reserves of calcium in the bones and if the signals in the body say that we need more calcium in our bloodstream, then the bones will release that and vitamin D will stimulate this release from the bones. And then finally, vitamin D also has an effect on the kidneys where it increases resorption and so the kidney will capture more calcium and get it back into the bloodstream so that it doesn't get spilled out in the urine. So vitamin D will stimulate all three of these processes in order to increase your calcium level. Now, in primary hyperparathyroidism, what we see is we have an over-secreting gland and the parathyroid hormone is super high and it's causing the calcium to be high and this is being done inappropriately by this bad gland. What the body will do over time is actually decrease the amount of vitamin D. Why is that? Because the purpose of vitamin D is to increase calcium in the blood. And so if you have too much calcium in your blood, the last thing you want is vitamin D creating more calcium in the blood. And so as a compensatory mechanism, the body will lower the vitamin D level in order to help prevent the calcium from getting out of control. Now we mentioned over here that vitamin D will increase calcium release from the bones and it will increase calcium recapture from the kidney. So all of these things are boosted by vitamin D and so what the body will do is lower the levels of vitamin D. In fact, if we see a patient that has this combination, this combination, a patient with high calcium, high PTH, and low vitamin D, has a parathyroid tumor every single time. This is diagnostic. These three things together. You get this three combination, there is a bad parathyroid or maybe even more than one bad parathyroid um, responsible for this combination. 
Now, sometimes this can get confusing because people will pick up a low vitamin D and they'll think, well then, if the vitamin D is low, I should supplement it. But if we go back, what would supplementing do? It would increase the amount of calcium in the blood and if you already have high calcium in your blood, you do not need any more vitamin D. What you need is to get the primary problem fixed and when that gets fixed, then the vitamin D will be able to be corrected. In fact, if you give somebody vitamin D that has this combination, that has a tumor in their neck, it will be difficult for them to increment their vitamin D. The body's going to resist it. So if you have vitamin D that's low on a blood test, before vitamin D is ever supplemented, you need to check to make sure that your calcium is normal and that your PTH is normal. Now, in a subsequent video, I'm going to go into a little bit more of the diagnostics of parathyroid hormone, calcium, and how D interacts. And it can get a little bit tricky and it can get a little bit confusing, so I kind of want to give that its own time and space. But I wanted to introduce vitamin D and the role that it has on this entire complex system. I want to leave you with this final thought. A low vitamin D will never be the cause of high calcium. If you have high calcium, the vitamin D is low because the body is trying to counteract the high calcium. So a low vitamin D is never the cause of high calcium, it's the result of high calcium and that's super important. We do not want to fight what our body is naturally doing. So our body will detect that there's a problem here and its main response is to lower the vitamin D. So we don't want to defeat our body's own response to this. We want to correct the underlying problem and then the vitamin D will correct almost on its own and we can reverse this whole situation. We'll talk more about vitamin D and its interaction in subsequent videos. You can check out parathyroid.doctor for more information on this. And um, I hope between the first video where we covered all of this and this video that you get the message that vitamin D is super, super important, but we have to pay attention to what, why is our vitamin D low and make sure that if it's low as a protective mechanism that we don't defeat that by inappropriately supplementing vitamin D. Hope that all makes sense. Join us for our next video.